Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the wonderful originator and creator of the heavens and the earth, the revealer of all truth and the sender of all prophets. We can never thank Almighty God, Allah, for his many blessings, his gifts, and his goodness to the human family. We thank him for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and for raising up from among us a divine leader, teacher, and guide in the personage of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I thank Allah each and every day for the extension of his grace and his mercy to us by giving to us today an extension of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and one who embodies his will and his love and his mercy to the whole of humanity. The man that I speak of is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to welcome each and every one of you who are here at the National Center in our auditorium at Muhammad University of Islam, to all those who are in the audience in the various mosques and study groups throughout the country and those that are watching via internet who have come out uh, from their homes this morning in search of knowledge, in search of wisdom, in search of understanding, and seeking to gain that knowledge that will give us peace and contentment of mind. We hope that your visit today will be a fulfilling one, and that you will go away this morning with something that will move you closer to your goal in life in the fulfillment of its purpose. And towards that end, we welcome back to the rostrum, as Brother Fontaine often describes me as a fireball minister from the ministry class. Now this is a fireball minister. And we are happy that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has invited him back to the rostrum to speak to the nation and to our community, and for that matter, to the world, once again as his representative in this cause. He really needs no introduction. He's a beautiful brother, young student minister doing a great job in the city of Indianapolis, Indiana. Will you help me? Will you join me? in receiving once again our young minister from Indianapolis, Indiana, Brother Nuri Muhammad. Hi, assalamu alaikum. In, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, we forever thank him for his messenger, Messiah and exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank them for preparing the one who sits in his seat, a divine leader, a divine teacher, and a divine guide to them, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. It's in their holy and righteous names that I greet my brothers and sisters in the greeting words of peace of Islam alaikum. It's such an honor and a privilege to be back uh, at headquarters again. I thank Allah for the uh, opportunity. Um, of course, I said last time that I felt monarchs in my stomach. That's how nervous I was. Well, they came on back again to visit. <laughs> but inshallah, we'll be able to meet and overcome that and represent the greatest, boldest, wisest, most courageous, God-fearing, God-centered, noblest black man walking the earth, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. We thank Allah. As the scientists have found that man is made up of the deposits that have been put within him, and they have categorized those deposits in the line of DNA, information, 
and that which we learn from life experience. I'm so pleased to thank a lot that today uh, two special people are here visiting with us uh, that came up the road to see one their husband and the other their son. I thank a lot. My mother is here and my wife, Sister Terry, is present. I thank a lot for them. All praise is due to Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, and the Honorable Minister has verified that this hadith is the truth, that the best among us is the one that is kindest to his mother and his wife. It makes sense for the, one, the mother is the womb that brought you into the world, and your wife is that womb that will carry you on down into a world to come. So I thank Allah for my wife, and I thank Allah for my mother who are present today. The third source that I want to give honor and recognition to is the man that taught me everything that I know. Yes, and the man that is the example of the one that I one day hope to become. Right. I thank Allah for my biological father, but he was absent, so he's been like a daddy. And there's a difference between a daddy and a father. Yes, a daddy is one that knows how to plant the seed to bring you into the world. But a father is one that knows how to take you after you came into the world and teach you how to navigate through the hostile environment of society to become successful. Well, I thank Allah for my daddy, but I also thank Allah over and over again for my father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has taught me everything that I know and helped me to navigate and guide through society. All praise is due to Allah. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that any time that there is a longing for a people, and that people deserve a thing that they long for. When that longing exists for a protracted period of time, nature will produce from that longing, out of that people, one that will answer that longing. Yes, well, it is natural for any child to want to have a father. And that longing to want to have that place in your heart and in your mind of a supreme example of what a man is supposed to be. It is natural to know that in order for you to be a man, you have to meet a man and I thank Allah that my father was in fact absent so that that longing would always be present and I could find that example and that fulfillment in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan who has been to me a greater father than any man could have been at home via DVD through CDs and through audios and VHS I thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan all praise is due to Allah he has proved himself to be worthy of our father. He has proved himself to be worthy of our divine leader, teacher, and our divine guide. He has proved himself to be worthy of the supreme example of what man can become if we bow down the truth in the modern time. But we cannot afford to worship the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But look deeply into the principles that make him magnetic and adopt those principles and live those principles that he will never die and neither will we. There is no death for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. For what makes the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not his form nor his possession. But what makes the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that he is the embodiment of immutable, undeniable, irrefutable principles that are as long living as the universe itself. You can't kill Farrakhan if you don't kill love. You can't kill Farrakhan if you don't feel courage. You can't kill Farrakhan if you don't kill compassion and mercy, willpower, faith, and discipline. So even when he goes away to be with his father, we in the nation, we can't afford to get weak. We can't lay down or sit down and we can't fall apart because what made the man what he is is still going to be present on the scene. And as long as we represent with courage, move out with faith and discipline with the image of Farrakhan in our mind, even when he ain't on the scene, we will be able to keep him alive and well, thanking Allah for him in our presence and in our actions. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. It is in that light that we have a subject today titled The Mind of Muhammad coming from a book called The Supreme Wisdom Lessons, given to us by our Savior, Master Farad Muhammad. It says on the cover for registered Muslims only, but you can get it on the internet now. 
You might be able to Yahoo or Google it on the internet, but one thing you can't Google, and that's understanding. You cannot Google insight. You cannot Google that which is within inside of the lessons, behind the words of the lessons. You have to submit to the rules of the lessons, to the guiding principles of the lessons, and live the life that the lessons dictate in order for you to extract the understanding of those lessons. Understanding is the first phase or the second phase or the byproduct of submission. This is why when we first came into the contact with the teachings and we studied it, and we got registered, wrote the letter, recited student enrollment actual facts and got what we call X up. When we got that X at the end of our name, we went back and read the message to the black man and swore somebody added some pages and chapters to the same book we had been reading before we got registered. Why? Because Allah grants us understanding by way of our submission. Ramadan will be starting tomorrow. And those of us that have participated in the regimen of Ramadan bear witness that it seems like somebody added some new chapter to the Quran every time Ramadan comes. Why? Because submission dictates understanding. And the more we have submitted in 06, the greater 07 Ramadan reading will be. The more we submitted in 07, the greater the 08 reading of the Holy Quran will be for you and me during this sacred and holy month. Ramadan is a blessed regimen. It's not something we should run from, it's something we should run to. However, Ramadan is not for everyone. Did you hear me? If you're already perfect, you shouldn't practice Ramadan. If you don't need no purification, Ramadan's not for you. If you are sin free and flaw free and fault free, then you don't need Ramadan. But for the rest of us, we're going to wake up before the sun wakes up, read our Holy Quran, pray to Allah, abstain from food and drink during the daylight, not argue, not quarrel, not lie, steal, cheat, and engage in no sexual activity during the daylight hours. Man, when he was created, was created according to the Bible with power and dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. Man was given an assignment to maintain that power. Be fruitful. Is that right? Multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has caused us to see and to understand that there's a difference between multiplication and being fruitful. Even though they sound the same, one is physical while the other one is spiritual. Multiplication is to make babies. We've been doing a good job of that. But being fruitful is like marrying ideas and concepts in your mind that bring birth to new ideas and concepts that advance our intelligence. So we've been multiplying physically, but we have not been being as fruitful spiritually as we should have been. But if we had built our minds up, then when we brought children into the world, we would have had the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding required to guide them in the world that we brought them into. Then he says in the scripture to replenish the earth and subdue it. Well, the word replenish means to replace with something better. It is the job of every mother to try to make their daughter better than self. It's the job of every father to strive to make their son better than themselves. It's the goal of every teacher, not just to make the student like him or equal to him, but for that student to stand on the shoulders of his teacher and carry out his will and assignment to a whole nother level. That's why you can't dismiss the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You can't love one without the other. You can't like the messenger Elijah Muhammad and not like the apostle, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. For he is the one on the shoulders of that message, carrying out an extension of the work of the Lamb of God, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Well, since man was given power and dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and every creeping thing that crawls on the earth, the Holy Quran says it in Surah 14 like this, that Allah God created the seas subservient to man and all the ships thereof. He made the sun, the moon, and the stars subservient to man, and everything in the heaven and everything inside the earth subservient. To be subservient means to be less than. So if we are given authority over everything in the heaven and everything in the earth, we as human beings are superior to the planet. 
We're superior to the air, to the stars, to the sun, and to the moon. These are called in the Bible, a glory of God. But man is not called a, he's called the glory of God. Which means that we are supposed to have a level of mastery over the forces of nature. And over every physical thing in the outside world. But it becomes difficult to gain control of the forces of nature when we don't have control of the forces of urges within ourselves. So Ramadan becomes that holy regimen by which for a 30 day window of time we exercise a new thought process that brings birth to new words coming out of our mouth. Those new words bring birth to new actions. Those new actions bring birth to new habits we form in Ramadan. And those habits make a new character and our character makes an entire new future. So we have the ability in a 30 day window of time to come out of Ramadan a completely new and better creature by the help and grace of Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Man, all praise is due to Allah. Man is supposed to have control over the earth, but if man can't control self, then earth becomes a difficult task. But if man can gain control of the bone of himself, then he has the authority over the rock of the planet. If man can gain control over the thirst and blood of self, he can gain mastery over the waters of the planet. If man can gain mastery over his own flesh, then he can gain control over the vegetation. For the molecular structure and system that both are set up on are identical. One's just a macrocosm while the other one is a microcosm. The rock of the earth is like the bone of man, so teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, the vegetation of the earth is like the flesh of man. In fact, if you were to go pull a leaf off the tree and put a leaf next to your hand, they both look alike. Why? Because the nature of them are one and the same. Some scientists even say that if you were to lay out the, the globe in flat form that, and put body next to it, that the way veins and arteries move in the body are the same way lakes, rivers, and streams move on top the face of the earth. Well, we have a problem gaining control over the forces of nature because we don't control the urges within self. But if we can gain control over the water that goes into our body, over the food that goes into our body, and over our sexual appetite, then these three urges are more powerful than any other bad habit we have in the world. For we need food. We need water. Is that right? That's right. But we don't need a pack of cools. We don't need no alcohol. Is that right? We don't need five meals a day. So by gaining mastery over a natural need, we have control then over the unnatural wants of this world. So I pray a lot that we will all participate in this month of Ramadan. All praise is due to Allah. In Ramadan, we read the, the Holy Quran from one cover to the next. Is that right? Yes, There's a saying in science that you are what you eat. And for every physical law, there's also a spiritual counterpart. So just as a human being could eat and digest physical food, you and I also can digest spiritual food. Yes, and if what we eat physically, we adopt the nature of it then what we eat spiritually, we will do the same thing. Did, did you hear me? It's impossible to eat swine flesh and not become a greedy individual. It's impossible to eat swine flesh and not become a dirty individual. It's impossible to eat the swine's flesh and not take on the characteristics of the swine flesh. Whatever you eat, when you eat it, you eat the nature of that which is in its blood. Well, the DNA of the Holy Quran starts off in its introduction and it says in this book there is no doubt in it well if there is no doubt in the holy quran and we are eating it in ramadan then when we eat it we adopt the nature of that which we consume so we begin to adopt the characteristics of walking the earth with no doubt in us and if we have no doubt you can't bring birth to hypocrisy if you have no doubt you don't have failure you have victory you have success Everything your hands touch, you will be able to make it happen. All praise is due to Allah. 
the Holy Quran is without a shadow of a doubt the revelation of Allah. It is proved in its mathematical coding under the number 19. The number 19 we have been taught represents the secret to the mystery of God. There are 114 chapters in the Holy Quran. That's 19 times 6. The total number of verses in the Holy Quran are 6,346 or 19 times 334. The first statement in the Holy Quran is in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, and it consists of 19 Arabic letters. The first revelation that was given to the prophet was made up of 19 words. The total number of letters of this first revelation was 76 words, which is 19 times 4. The last chapter revealed has 19 words, and the first verse in this 110th chapter is 19 letters. Did you hear me? The name Allah appears in the Holy Quran 2,698 times, or in other words, 19 times 142. The word Quran appears 38 in 38 different chapters, which is 19 times 2. The total number of times the Quran is mentioned is 57, which is 19 times 3. Did y'all hear me? Yes, now, this is not a coincidence, brothers and sisters. This is not some way of osmosis. It is a 626 septillion to one chance that the Holy Quran could be mathematically precise like it is and not be the revelation from Almighty God Allah. So it is the truth 100% unadulterated from Allah as he revealed it. But more significant even than the book itself. For all books are great in their service to man. All principles are great in their service of humanity. Is that truth? Yes, sir. So as the Holy Quran is a book, which is really our nature written down on paper, yes, it is designed to reacquaint us with that which is already programmed within self that we have lost the ability to read and tune in on our own. Any time that a people cannot listen to their own Christ consciousness, or hear their own Allah awareness, or hear Muhammad in their own mind, Allah God, out of his mercy, brings a messenger outside of self to reacquaint us with the messenger of God inside of self. But when man and woman really know how to hear what we call the self-accusing spirit, or the God within, then the exterior messenger of God is not necessary except to wake up the one that is within inside of self. Does that make sense? So whenever this book, Holy Quran, was revealed, it is a book designed to bear witness to a man. Y'all still with me? The number 19 represents the secret of the mystery of God. Well, this number 19 appears in one place in the Holy Quran. In Surah 74, Verse 30. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Surah 74, verse 30, the number 19 appears. We contend that when the picture of Master Farad Muhammad is made, that there's only one official image of our Savior, Master Farad Muhammad. And that is him with a Holy Quran inside of his hand. And underneath the picture it says, the Holy Quran made flesh. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is the Holy Quran made flesh. Number 19 appears one place in the Quran. Surah 74 verse 30. Master Farad Muhammad made himself known July 4th, 1930. July is the seventh month. So if you took the seven four, that's July 4th, the number 19 is in the 30th verse. Master Farad Muhammad is the true sign and representation of what the Quran is supposed to produce in its fullest blossom. You say, well, what does that have to do with me? That's Master Farad Muhammad. Well, that same power is inside of self. Look at the basic genetic composition of man. It's called DNA. D is the fourth letter of the alphabet. N is the 14th letter of the alphabet. And A is the first letter. 4 plus 14 plus 1 is 19. Why? Because God lives in you, black man and black woman, when you really understand it. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has caused us to see and to understand 
that not only is this book, Quran, the guiding light to help humanity get out of the rut that it has fallen into, but there also must be a key or a searchlight put over the Holy Quran and the Bible that we might be able to get guidance from it. Yes, sir. And since the Holy Quran itself is a sign of a greater version of itself, and that's a human being called Master Farad Muhammad, then we should look for that body of knowledge that Master Farad Muhammad himself wrote. And when we find that body of knowledge, we should hold it dear to our heart for whatever he says is in it is designed to make us like he's made himself. Does that make sense? Well, that body of knowledge are, is called the supreme wisdom lessons. Y'all still with me? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that the supreme wisdom introduces us to an entire new school of thought and is the foundation for a whole new world. Did y'all hear that? Most people, when they think about the foundation of a new world, they think about buildings, governments, and farmland. Is that right? That's right. But scripture says that whenever God comes, that he makes all things new. Right. Is that right? right? Well, you can't have a new world if you don't have new things that make up that world. Right. And what makes things? People make things. So in order for you to have a new world, you have to have new things. And to have new things, you have to have new people. And to make new people, you have to have a new mind in that people. And to make a new mind, you have to have a new teaching and a new teacher. This is why our scholar among us, Mother Tynetta Muhammad, has beautifully shown how 154 questions and answers of the supreme wisdom Show us how Allah God would use the lessons to resurrect us and make us like himself. Come on. For 154 is 22 times 7. When you put 22 over 7 as a fraction, it is saying the same as pi. Pi is that 3.1444 number that is used with a radius squared to, this, to, to uh, determine a circumference. Is that right? Go ahead, man. Well, just as you would use a pi to determine a circumference of a circle, the lessons become the new diameter or circumference of our thinking that produces from you and me a whole new sphere of activity superior than what we've seen in the world present. So if you're thinking like somebody, they control you. Is that right? Carter G. Woodson said it like this. Whoever prescribes for you your diameter of thinking dictates your circumference of activity. Is that right? Yes, the only way that you can think outside of a slave is if you are taught by someone other than a slave master. The only way you can think better than a Negro is if you talk to talk by someone superior to a Negro. Whatever the nature is of the teacher will determine and dictate the circumference of your activity. Well, if you are studying the mind of God and that becomes the diameter of your thinking, then what kind of actions will we see coming forth from a people that think like God? These lessons go on to say to us in our instructions, number six, it reads that the minister's class must study and prepare themselves for examination as soon as they are able to. Everyone's final examination will be before Allah our Savior, which will include all of the form, forms of lessons, number one's answers, and all the problems and a general review of the three and one half years of labor. Absence in the ministry's class must always be investigated. Each Muslim should know all of this by heart. It is all his and her own. The time is ripe for us to reclaim our own, which is knowledge understanding and high civilization we all are equipped did y'all hear that yes, sir. we all are equipped physically and mentally to accomplish the said above with little study young old men women and children the mgt and gcc should study along with the training and report their progress along with the rest interesting brothers and sisters is that the MGT and GCC and the function of minister 
is mentioned in the same instruction. Why? Because, dear sisters, the seven components that help you to become a better helpmeet of the man you call husband are also to be used by those of us that desire to be helpers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to be better and more qualified help meets of him. Yes, sir. Did y'all hear me? Yes, sir. So we have to learn how to keep house. Take care of an institution that has his children inside of it. Is that right? Yes, sir. We have to learn how to rear the children. We have to learn how to guide all of those that come under our voice where they will be a reflection of the father of the household. Oh, yeah, man. Is that right? We have to learn how to take care of this one that is called our husband. For just as a husband is a manager of the affairs of an owner, Allah, God, and his Christ own the nation of Islam. And they have set the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the seat to manage our affairs and guide us safely across the river on his shoulders. So we got to take care of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He goes on to say, that we must not only be able to take care of the husband, but we have to learn how to sew. Well, whenever you sew, you are taking two different pieces of fabric, right? Or more, with the goal of finding a thread that you can use to weave them all together to convert different things that are separate into one thing united. Well, that's the goal of those of us that are helping the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is to take the crypts and weave them together with the bloods. To take the vice lords and connect them to the GDs. To take the old and put them with the young. The male with the female, the light with the dark. It's our job to sew our people together for our husband. All praise is due to Allah. We also have to learn how to cook. Why? Because when you're cooking, you're devising a recipe. You are putting inside of it seasoning and, and vegetables, but we found that that's not the whole total of a bowl of soup or any food. Come on. You can have two sisters following the same recipe and get what? Different results. Is that right? Well, if they put the same amount of seasoning, salt, garlic powder, pepper, and beans, and green pepper, y'all know what I'm saying. How does yours taste different than hers? It's because the main ingredient of cooking is not necessarily what you get out of your cabinet, but what you get out of your heart. And your emotions go inside of the food that you are cooking. Well, likewise, be those of us that are helpless have to have love in our heart for our people, sincerity in our heart for our people and the rise of them. That when we cook them food, it nourishes them and gets them back into divine life. Is that right? We have to learn how to act at home and abroad. It's easy to be a public great person. But what really makes you great is whenever your wife and your children look up to you. It's easy to go out there with security and be seen as something great and noble. Because when you dress like a man and you look like a citizen of a nation that has a 78 year legacy then you are actually able to, in your appearance, borrow the reputation of that man and that movement. So when people look at you and give you respect and honor, pat you on the back and clap for you, you are borrowing some of that from the legacy of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and from the work of the Nation of Islam for the last 78 years. But when you're at home, you ain't suited and booted. We at home, you don't get to borrow the reputation. You are what you are. So we have to learn not only how to act abroad, but we got to learn how to act at home so that those that love us the most and know us the best will be able to give us a A plus at representation of God and his work. All praise is due to Allah. You know, it's interesting that inside of this accomplishment of the said above. And this accomplishment is said to be reclaiming our own knowledge, understanding, high civilization. That there are three categories of people that are mentioned that are normally left out of divine discussion. One is the youth, the women, and also the children.
But in this, from Master Farad Muhammad's instructions, he is saying that regardless to whether you are male or female, whether you are young or whether you are old, even if you are a child, you can accomplish the said above high civilization, knowledge, wisdom, and reclaim your own. Did y'all hear that? Which means that you don't have to be old to be great. And you don't have to be a male to be great. You can be young and still become great. And you can be a woman and still become great. In fact, the legacy of the past shows that young people and women have always done great things. Did y'all hear me? Don't, my young brothers and sisters, don't ever let nobody tell you what you can't do. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us on August the 3rd that can't is not in the vocabulary of God. In fact, you can't even find the word can't or cannot in the whole Holy Quran. Cain is a cuss word. Add that to your Ramadan list. Take it out. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Every year at Al Muhammad University in Indianapolis, the first day of school, we have a funeral. We have all the children to write out the word Cain. And we take all of them to the back. And we have a eulogy and everybody buries the word can't. Why? Because for the rest of the year, we won't, don't want to hear you say what you can't do in mathematics. We don't want to hear what you can't do in history or what you can't do in science or what you can't do in the line of labor. And every time a child slips up and accidentally says can't in school, we take them back outside. Come on out back. Well, what's buried right there? Can't. Well, if it's buried and it's dead and you can't do nothing with it no more, so go on back to school and say, I am mathematics. I am geometry. I am history. I am science. I am a God. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Young people have always done great things. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he was the king of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years of age. Amaziah, Uzziah, Hezekiah, Jehoiakim, and Jotham were 25 years old. Jehoahaz was 23. Zedekiah was 21. Ahaz and Amon were 20. You notice there's some men. They're getting younger and younger. They were kings of Israel. Uzziah was 16 years old. Manasseh was 12 years of age. Josiah was eight and the king, and the youngest was Joash, who was seven years old running things. The average age for the king of Israel was 21 years of age. Don't tell me what young people can't do. Ishmael was 14 years old when Abraham took him to be sacrificed on top of the mountain. And at 14, he had enough faith, enough love for Allah. Enough belief in the power of his God that whenever he was going to be sacrificed, Ishmael said to his father, if it pleases Allah, then it pleases me. Ishmael back then didn't have no eat to live. He didn't have our Savior has arrived. He didn't have the study guides. We have more wisdom today than he had yesterday. No matter how old you are, stand up and make yourself a reasonable sacrifice. David, when he slew Goliath, was a young man. It says in Samuel 17, 42, that when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. Y'all didn't hear that. Abraham was questioned by his father as to why he didn't play that much and why he studied so often. And the Holy Quran says in Surah 21, verse 60, a youth named Abraham destroyed the idols. In scripture, the definition of a youth is one between the ages of 12 and 16. So Abraham was destroying idols as a youth. David slew Goliath as a youth. Children were running Israel as young people. So you and me, we have the ability to do it too. So don't ever, as a young person, think that you can't accomplish the said above. Master Farad Muhammad, 
Didn't wait till he got too old to start. He seen himself pushing the DuPonts and Rockefellers into a lake of fire when he was six years old. Is that right? There's a man by the name of Yaku who was six years old playing with two pieces of steel and discovered the law of opposites attract. Is that right? Yaku started his mission when he was 18 years of age. Is that right? Jesus, according to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, finished school at by the age of 12 and that he took astronomy geometry and all other branches of science and one day an old wise man was walking up on Jesus and came to teach Jesus a supreme lesson called the radio in the head and when he met Jesus on his way home from school he taught this boy Jesus how to tune in on thinking of other people that's some high mathematics. That's beyond trigonometry and calculus. That's the mathematics wherein you can tune in onto the frequencies of thought. This boy was 12 years of age and he's the, the messenger said that he learned his lesson in three days. So if a young boy could be 12 years of age and learn how to tune in, then your young people, we can do whatever we want to do. Don't ever doubt that you can accomplish the said above. You say, well, you don't understand it's a different world now. It's peer pressure. What is peer pressure? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that every human being has around themselves millions of pounds of atmospheric pressure per square inch of the human body. Yet we do not convulge on self, nor do we implode. Well, how is it that we are able to have this much pressure on the outside and we don't break under said pressure? It's because there's a method called exhaling, where we release more air out of ourselves than the environment is imploding on ourselves. Well, if King Tut could be 14 years of age and run in Egypt, which at that time was the most powerful government in the world, and he was able to hold off Napoleon and his army. Then all the young soldiers, you can hold off the urge for sex. If King Tut was 14 years of age and he can make war with the Assyrians and defeat them, then you can defeat the temptation for drugs. If he could defeat the Gox, the Visigoths, the invasion of the anglo saxons the Nomads and the Vikings, then you should be able to resist as a young soldier the invasion of a cave people out of Paris who are design, designing for you low-rise and tight behind clothes. If they could do it, you can do it. That's the lesson that is present. Well, if we got pressure on us but we don't implode because we got more coming out than we do coming in, all it takes for a young soldier to have is more God in you than they got devil in them more right in you than they have wrong in them more farrakhan in you than they have willy lynch in them more truth in you than they have falsehood in them more focus in you than they have fickleness in them and whenever they come around you won't become like them they will have to become like you bad company corrupts good character but good company can turn a bad person into something noble all praise is due to allah well, in dealing with that, our youth have the ability to actually survive, not just survive, but become the great rulers that Allah promised us that we could become. Women in Islam are not oppressed, as the world would like to make us believe. In fact, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was the greatest liberator of women that the world has ever seen. Is that right? You say, well, why, well, why, do you, why, why, why do they go covered? They're not covering themselves as women because there's something wrong with them. They're covering themselves from, because there's something wrong with men. So the Holy Quran says, lower your, your, uh, the hem of your garment and cover your bosoms. Is that right? Cover your hair. Loose fit clothing. Why? To guard against the lust of lustful men. Well, if that's the case, ain't nothing wrong with them, the reason why they're like that. 
it's something wrong with us. Last I checked, everything of value always is well wrapped. When you get diamonds, it's well wrapped. When you get gold or crystal, it's always well wrapped. Well, how much more valuable is the black woman to us? Shouldn't she go well wrapped too? All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. Is that right? He taught us that when you teach a man, you teach an individual. But when you teach a woman, you teach a nation. He taught us that the black woman is the second self of Allah. He went on further to say there's no such thing as a no good woman. Any woman that was made that way was made that way by no good man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the only heaven for a black man is in a black woman. He said that by nature, the woman has a big job for she is the one who increases the nation. He said the Muslim woman goes natural. When you see her, you are looking at natural beauty. You don't need makeup, my dear sister. What is makeup? Not to mention that they got swine inside of it. Not to mention that most of the makeup is made of road kill off the side of the road. But even on a spiritual side, whenever you go to school and you take a makeup test, it's because you failed the first one. Well, if Allah himself created you in the wombs of your mother, he didn't make no mistake when he made you look the way that he made you look. So you ain't got nothing to make up for. God made you like he made you. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. He said that the black woman is the mother of civilization. Is that right? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went on the show and proved to us that if we do our part as men, then she will automatically do her part. Did y'all hear what I just said? When a man is a man, a woman will be a woman, for she is a natural reflector, so teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The originator, whenever he had a mate, you don't read of any domestic disputes among them. Do you? The Honorable Minister taught us on what is your role, that when Allah created his mate, woman, he brought his woman out of himself. So she became the second self of Allah. Allah himself was self-created. But when he brought forth this object called woman, he made her the first Muslim. He says that she was the first one to go through the process of submission to actually become what she submitted to. So he was a God and she became a God by way of her submission to the Supreme God. Did you hear what I just said? When Allah created this mate, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches, I'm keep on saying that because I don't know nothing. I'm being honest with you. I'm, I'm just a nobody. Try and tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. And that somebody is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's not me. All praise is due to Allah. I'm not green fake like I'm the doctor. I'm just a pharmacist. The doctor has already analyzed and diagnosed the condition. And he prescribed the medicine. I'm just trying to take what he said and give it back to you and remind you that he said three in the morning, five in the evening, that whole bottle, when it's done, then you can stop taking the medicine. Whenever Allah created this mate, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said he created her to fulfill certain needs. Y'all with me still, right? He said, one, someone to be kind to his eye. He wanted, he wanted somebody to look good. The originator did. Ain't nothing wrong with that. If the originator wanted it, ain't nothing wrong with it. Truth? He wanted someone that was kind to his eye. He wanted one that would be 
a big help, big in mind, but not in body. I'm going to leave it just like that. Because that, that's how the minister, he, that's what he said. No, I'm not going to repeat that again. I heard that. If she overweight, work out with her. If she overweight, follow the same diet regimen you want her to follow. That's how you help, by being an example. Number three said he wanted someone to talk to about his desires who would help him achieve his objectives. A man that does not know where he's going does not need somebody to help him get there. So until you find your purpose for existence, till you have a mission that you are striving for, it's not good to get somebody on your team to help you go nowhere fast. It's better to wait till you get on solid ground as an individual so you can build a solid family as a Muslim. Last thing that he said, he said that he created this mate to be someone to console him while he was making war with the darkness. He said while he was making war with the darkness. Not playing with it, but making war with it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that it's in a woman's nature to console a man who is a producer, who is a worker, and who is a warrior. So when a man is a man, then a woman's a natural reflector, she will do her part. The problem is, is that as men, we got to become better producers. We got to become harder workers. And we've got to keep that militant propensity that allows us to be warriors in everything that we do. You cannot be a black man in a white man's world, walking the earth soft spoken and as a punk or a coward. You got to be a warrior if you want to be successful in a world diametrically opposed to your rise. All praise is due to Allah. We all used to say the Lord's Prayer, but the Lord's Prayer shouldn't just be a prayer for a man. It should be a principle guideline that shows us what a man really looks like. Did you hear what I just said? I remember one time our student supreme captain, he said about the woman, and I said, man, that's deep. He said, how is it that the woman can take your sperm, which is worthless water, as the Holy Quran says, and take worthless water and produce you a son or a daughter. If she can do all of that with this womb, what do you think she can do with this womb? So she's worthy of you bouncing your ideas and goals and visions off of, I thank Allah for that guidance. That makes sense, don't it? If she can turn worthless water into a full grown human being, then surely she can help you open your business up and get it going right. In the Lord's Prayer, it starts off saying that our Father, which art in heaven. Come on, church, y'all remember the prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven. Heaven is a high place. Meaning that a man is supposed to be one that his children and his wife look up to. Hallowed be thy name. Thy name means your reputation. Meaning that the work that a man does in his home and in his community is an honorable work that sends forth before him a noble reputation. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He don't just sing about what he want to do. He don't just pray about what he want to do, but whenever he puts his mind to it, he determines the thing. He uses prayer as a method of attracting and amplifying the principles of God in the supreme being and also the power of God within himself. And he goes into the world and he brings into existence what he wills. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. You can't work no job and get no daily bread. If you're working on another man's job, you're getting weekly bread or bi-weekly bread. In order for a man to get daily bread, he got to have his own business doing for himself. That's the way a real man looks like under the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad.
Forgive us our trespasses. Is that right? As we forgive those who trespass against us, meaning that he doesn't hold grudges. He's not petty. He recognizes that if he can't forgive another person, then a lot God is justified in not forgiving him. So since we are saying as we forgive others, that's how Allah is going to forgive us. We have to be careful how we condemn a person and put them into a permanent spot wherein they are beyond redemption. For if Allah takes souls by night and he can choose to give it back or to keep it and cause them to die and they sleep. Anytime that a brother or sister gets a chance to wake up in the morning, it might mean that Allah still believes in them. So if he believes in them, who are we to condemn them? No, we got to have faith that they can turn around. All praise is due to Allah. What, what's the next one? And lead us not into temptation. You can't have one life as a man outside of your home life different than the life that you treat your child, teach your child. Children don't do what you say. Children do what you do. And just like your son might have physical characteristics and gestures that you never even taught him before. He also has spiritual characteristics that you don't have to even tell him about. There's a connection between a father and a son and a father and a daughter and a mother and a son and a mother and a daughter on a spiritual level. That somehow even though he don't know what you did, she don't know what you did, that spiritual, spiritual connection causes them to feel what you did. And they end up making the same dumb mistakes you made in the private that you didn't think was in the public. No, lead them not into a temptation. Don't advise them to do no wrong and don't do no wrong yourself. That will connect them spiritually to doing some wrong in the future. That's what a real man is supposed to look like. Does that make sense? No, sisters, you can accomplish the said above just like everyone else. In the nation of Islam, our constitution in article number seven says the woman's rights a woman shall rise as high as her God given gifts and talents allow her in her own interests and in the interest of her nation within the framework of the laws of Islam any action inaction or course of conduct on the part of any registered Muslim which impedes or opposes the provision of this article shall be considered an offense against the purpose of Muhammad Mas. Did y'all hear that? Well, that means that we are not only born as men to become the great rulers, but we are born to create an environment that is safe enough for our women to be able to work out and express themselves in. The world we live in right now is not very safe for our women to just be out there doing whatever they're trying to do. Is that right? So we have to work as men to produce a world that has a climate and atmosphere conducive to her being able to express her skills, gifts, and talents without hindrance or suppression. Are y'all right? Why is it that Master Farad Muhammad would say to us, that we can accomplish the said above, reclaiming our own knowledge, understanding the high civilization. And we all are equipped physically and mentally, young, old, men, women, and children. It doesn't, it's because it's not about the age or the gender that makes someone potential or great. What advances a person is not but their mind. So when the mind is developed, in regardless to the age or the gender, when the mind is developed, then you can accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. Are y'all with me? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that the brain of man is infinite. He said you can't change your people without changing their thinking. It's thought that actually changes people. Did y'all hear that? He went on to say that we had 14 billion brain cells and that thought traveled in between these cells and around these cells at 24 billion miles per second. Didn't he say that? Then he gave us the math for the speed of other things. He said the earth and the other eight planets 
move at 1,037 and one-third miles per hour. Then he said it was something faster than that. Sound 1,120 feet per second. Then he said something faster even than that. Light 186,000 miles per second. But the fastest thing that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us in our study is the speed of thought. Why? Because the thought is superior to all of them. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. But a word is thought and sound married together. So before there ever was a word, there had to be sound and there had to be thought. Thought brought the light. Light means birth to the sound. And the sound brought birth to the planet. And y'all still with me? Yes, sir. The Holy Quran says that any time that Allah deems a thing, he simply says to it. He, he says to it, being it is. In the Bible it says, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let us make man. Anytime that the originator wants to bring something into the physical world, he speaks the thing into existence. Your words mean something, brother and sister. Your words are actually substitutes for reality. They're designed to replace reality temporarily. But they must grow and mature until they become an actual physical manifestation of that which you spoke. Y'all still with me? Well, if that's the case, then this brain, this mind, these thoughts traveling at 24 billion miles per second. This is the primary area of development that we should study and work on. Yes, sir. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Right now, black people spend $5.7 billion a year on getting their hair done and making their body smell good. Did, did you hear what I just said? And only $300 million on books. Billions of dollars on hair care and beauty product and only a few hundred million on books. Something wrong with that mathematics. We should not be investing more money in dressing up the outside of our hair than we are dressing up the inside of our hair. Right now, black people spend on the average of over 30 billion dollars on electronic devices, cell phones, iPod, so we got the latest and the most up-to-date cell phone up to our head, but don't have the most, the latest and most up-to-date thoughts in our brain. <laughs> Something wrong with that mathematics. No, the m science of the mind is where the real battle has always been. The scripture says that we war not with flesh and blood, but we war with principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So while the whole world on the ticker at the bottom of the screen has WMDs and you thinking about Iraq and Iran and weapons of mass destruction, the real enemy is not weapons of the mass destruction. The real enemy to us as black people have been weapons of mass deception. We've been tricked and hoodwinked and bamboozled for the last 400 years. The mind is so powerful that it has the ability to be a magnet and a magnifying glass. Meaning whatever you think about, you will attract it to yourself and you will also make it bigger than what it was before you attracted it. So you have to be careful, not just in what we say and what we do, but we have to be careful at what we think. The Holy Quran says that the throne of Allah's power is ever upon water. Well, this doesn't mean that Allah got some big throne sitting out in the middle of the ocean. Right. But if you do the math, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that there was 139,685,000 square miles of water on the planet. Is that right? Yes, sir. He said the Pacific Ocean covers 68,634,000 square miles. The Atlantic Ocean covers 41,321,000 square miles. The Indian Ocean covers 29,430,000 square miles. And the lakes and the rivers cover 1 million square miles. Well, when you add that all up, it comes up to 140,385,000 square miles. Well, where's the other 700,000 square miles of sea and ocean? 
It's not on the planet, it's inside the human being. So when Allah said his throne is on water, he's not talking about in the middle of a lake, pond, a river, or an ocean, but right inside the brain is where Almighty God Allah rests and resides at. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The Bible shows us that the battle of Satan against us has always been a mind war. Is that truth? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that when you look at the word scripture, the base word of scripture is script. If someone has a script for a play or a script for a movie, a script for a play is a pre-recorded document that dictates in advance thoughts and words and actions before the stage is ever set or the camera's ever turned on. Is that right? Well, just like an actor or actress can read a script to see what role they want to try out for, you and I have been given Bible and Holy Quran script chores. Not for no play or for no movie, but for life. And we can read them and determine what role that we want to play. Have you ever wondered why you don't read nobody's last names in the Bible? What's Moses' last name? You say, well, you know, Jesus Christ. Christ ain't his last name. That's his title. You don't read about any last names because it's not as important to know what family they came from as it is the function they came from. Because the function that they came from, you and I will experience it in the modern time. Does that make sense? So when you read the Bible and the Holy Quran, you're not looking at a historical frame of reference. Most of the time you're looking at today or tomorrow. You're not looking at somebody else. You're really looking at yourself. The scriptures of the Bible can even go beyond just people into being interpersonal. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says the first time we read about this devil or Satan, he appears in the book of Genesis as a serpent. Is that right? A serpent. He comes out of a tree, right? A tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Trees don't have knowledge on them. Y'all know that, right? You can't go to no tree and get a banana on one side and a Bible verse on the other. And trees never grow two fruits. Trees always grow one fruit based off of their nature. So you don't find a tree that's growing cherries on one side and oranges on the other. Apples on one side and pineapples on the other. Each fruit is dictated by the tree and each tree produces one fruit but here's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil and it's a tree that grows knowledge it's not a tree it's a human being affectionately they call it an apple that eve ate is that right notice that the apple is the symbol of the teachers and whenever a student comes to school, their first day of school, they bring an apple to put on their teacher's desk. Why? Because the apple represents an idea, concept, or mind. The student is saying that I'm bringing my mind to you. You can have my mind and make it and work with it and do with you what you want. So eating of someone's apples is eating of someone's ideas. So Satan is starting off as a snake in the garden working on an Adam and an Eve. When we went to school before we started first grade, we went to something called kindergarten. Is that right? Kindergarten is German for kind of a garden. Just like you plant seeds in a garden that you intend to see grow in the future. Your and my babies are taken before first grade. And they have seeds planted in them that don't pop up until 6th and 7th grade and ninth grade and sophomore year. And we saying, man, our babies is crazy. Something wrong with them. They got attention deficit disorder. I don't know what's happening. They crazy. They just, they, it's because you don't know what that kindergarten teacher put in your brain of your baby. So it's best to get your children out of the devil's killing fields and bring them to Muhammad school or teach them yourself. So you know what's going in the kind of a garden called the mind. 
All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said the role of Adam is to be the protector of the woman. But while Adam slept, Eve was deceived. Your conscious mind's job is to protect your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind does not have the authority to morally discriminate against what's put inside of it. It's just like the earth. If you put green bean seeds in, you're not going to grow no carrots. You can't put falsehood in and grow truth from the falsehood. So when the mind has in the subconscious mind, it's guaranteed to manifest it. The problem is, is that sometimes the seeds that we had put in our mind from the teacher from that spirit killer in an institution or even from a blind deaf and dumb family member that told you that you wasn't going to be nothing and everybody in the family is x y and z so you thought you rejected it but it's down deep in your subconscious mind and it pops up 10 years 20 years later and since you don't remember where you got it from and who told you you think it came from within yourself and anything that comes from within self, you don't send through the same process of logic. So when it comes from within self, it sounds like you. So you think that you came up with it on your own, so you roll with it. Not realizing that it was a demon or a spirit killer that put a wicked seed inside of your mind that manifests itself in the future with your voice attached to it. Where you believe it came from you and it didn't come from you. It came from your open enemy. So the mind was the original place that we see the war taking place. Y'all hear me? Yes, Later on, we read about in Isaiah, this, this enemy becoming a Leviathan. Yes, now he's a deep sea monster. Well, if the brain sits on water, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this deep sea monster represents submarines in the physical world, but could it represent also in the spiritual world those thoughts in your subconscious mind? Then you read later on at the end of the scripture where now he's become a great wonder in heaven and he's called a dragon. So now he's a great wonder in heaven. Dragon, where is heaven at? Heaven is the highest region of a particular environment. Well, the highest region of this particular environment is your mind. So now the serpent became a leviathan and matured into a dragon. The question is, what have we matured into? to actually defeat this modern day dragon that's posted up inside the heaven. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Well, if that's all said and it's the truth, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad went on to say to us in conclusion that the final battle would be in the sky. Did he say that? And he taught us about the mother plane. The world calls it a UFO, but we call it an IFO. They call it an unidentified flying object, but we call it an identified flying object. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that it exists, and it follows and backs the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan up everywhere that he goes. And you've seen it with your own eyes. You just don't want to believe what you've seen. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Well, if the final battle is in the sky, Listen to this on page 298 of the great illuminating book called Message to the Black Man. He said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you don't need navies, ground forces, air forces, or standing armies to fight this last war. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. The navy is in the water. Come on. Ground forces and standing armies are on the ground. But the Air Force is in the traditional definition of what we call sky. So the last and final battle in the sky is more than just the mother wheel in space. It's also the conflict that exists inside the mind. For a plane is more than just a physical contraption used to carry someone in the air. The dictionary says that the definition of plane is also a level of wisdom. A level of development, a level of dignity, a level of character is what a plane is. 
Anytime that one begins to read and study and open the books to become wise, when the book is open, it looks like a bird with wings. Is that right? Why? Because in order for you to fly above civilization, you have to have wisdom in your mind. And the more wisdom you have, the higher your plane or level of existence is. The more wisdom you have, the more development and dignity and character that you can muster up. Does that make sense? So to get on the mother plane is not something we should be sitting in our dark room just memorizing our lessons and not going out here saving our people. The mother planes when we get the high science and math of the mind, where we exist 40 miles above the problems of this civilization, where we have that bird's eye view, where we can see our enemy coming in advance, and we know how to move and maneuver in the world. And we, like those bomber planes, have a bomb attached to us with this truth that we drop on the brains of our people that drill down into their mind one mile deep which happens to be 5,280 feet. That's the same distance of the subconscious mind. And we can go and blow up all that beast wisdom in their head and resurrect the God knowledge that is recorded and buried in their genetic composition. And when you drop the bomb of the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, there are no duds. There are no ineffective bombs. There are no blanks in the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The whole world tried to say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't know what he was talking about. But he challenged all of them to prove that he was alive. And offered them $10,000 per word. Message to the black man has 110,500 words in it. Fall of America has 80 through 3,525 words. Our Savior has arrived has 70,850 70, words. And each to live one and two has 113,750 words. If he was telling a lie, they could have got $3,786,250,000. But didn't nobody cash in on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? All praise is due to Allah. So you don't need no Dr. Phil. You don't need no Atkins. You don't need none of the empirical knowledge of this wicked world. You need the explanation of the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and to follow the example of a man that's in front of us. That's the greatest leader, teacher, and guy we've ever seen. In conclusion, all the studying that man can do is like the homework part. We study, we put the wisdom inside of our mind, but every now and then when you come to take a test, it helps. In fact, sometimes more than all our study to actually have an example at the top of the page. Do y'all remember that? And even though you might have studied as intense as you could, it didn't get you rooted in solving the problems. But when you've seen that example where someone actually worked it out for you in advance, then you have faith and confidence by use of that formula that you can solve the problems. I'm telling y'all, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the example at the top of the page of life. Follow him and fork his formula, and we will be successful. Thank you for listening. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That means God is great. God is the greatest. Brother Nuri Muhammad, our student minister from Indianapolis, Indiana. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you, Brother Nuri. How many of you are visiting us today for your very first time? Can we see your hands? Dear sisters, brothers, welcome, welcome. Welcome. How many of you here 
at our national center in Chicago and throughout the country believe that what you heard this morning to be the truth and that that truth is good for all of our people. Can I see your hands? How many of you were inspired by the message uh, this morning that you would like to learn more of the teachings and the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and would like to become a part of the Nation of Islam and join on with your own kind and unite with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. How many of you would like to do that? May I see your hands? Raise them high, don't feel bashful. My dear sisters, brothers, Brother Nuri Mohammed, on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, would like the honor and the privilege and the pleasure of shaking your hand and welcoming you personally this morning to the National Center here. And the student ministers and representatives throughout the country would like that same honor wherever you are. If you've raised your hand and you would like to be a part of the Nation of Islam. Please stand up where you are. Come down the center aisle. Here in Chicago, you will have the honor of shaking the hand of our keynote uh, speaker. And he would like the honor and the pleasure to shake your hand and to welcome you this morning. One more time, let's put our hands together for Brother Nuri Muhammad. May Allah continue to bless you to be an excellent, excellent representative and helper of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Let me take this uh, opportunity to welcome uh, this morning personally the womb that gave birth to this beautiful young man, his mother, where is she? Where's mom? We're honored to have you. May God continue to bless you. We're honored. And welcome. Uh, I would like, um, first, uh, as many of you know, um, one of the uh, sons of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, passed, uh, Brother Jabber Herbert Muhammad. Most uh, know him, remember him as the manager of uh, our great champion Muhammad Ali. And uh, may the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon him. His funeral was held uh, Wednesday uh, here in Chicago. We want to thank um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I would like uh, to thank him publicly, personally, on behalf of the Muhammad family for his kindness and his generosity in opening uh, the doors of the Salam restaurant for the repast. It was um, beautiful to see some of the old followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad members of the family coming together, unfortunately, uh, on this occasion. But there's so much love uh, 
uh, in the hearts of those who not only have come from his loins, but all of us who have benefited from this great teaching. And the minister's kindness and generosity uh, was appreciated by all of the members of the family um, who, of course, were gathered together over the weekend. There was a memorial service at Salam uh, restaurant uh, yesterday for Brother Jabber Muhammad. Many of you don't know, but it is true that Brother Jabba Muhammad, the nation of Islam in its management of Muhammad Ali, made it possible for the modern day athletes to get the contracts into the millions of dollars because of Brother Jabba Muhammad and Muhammad Ali because he was the first black athlete an athlete across the board uh, to be paid into the millions of dollars uh, for a prize fight. So may Allah bless his family. Uh, prayers and thoughts uh, are with the Muhammad family. And um, lastly, um, we are now going into September. And in a few more weeks, if it be the will of Allah, we will dedicate Mosque Maryam on the 19th of October. Oh, I can't wait. And we, as this physical house is being renovated and made ready, it just so happens that Ramadan comes uh, in the weeks uh, prior to our dedication. So we'll be working on our minds, Brother Nuri battling right up here, that's right, that's right. Satan right up here, that's the right. dragon right up here right. to make ourselves presentable on that day. We hope by the end of this week um, to have on our website from any of the official websites of the Nation of Islam, the finalcall.com, NOI.org, where all of those who are interested in making a contribution uh, to this uh, historic uh, occasion, we'll be able to purchase uh, their seat or contribute to a seat in Mosque Maryam to have your name on uh, a plaque that will be placed on the seat. And our technical staff is setting it up similar to if you've made a reservation for a seat on an airline, you'll be able to see all of the seats at Mas Mariam, and you just click, reserve your seat, that's your seat. And uh, we did find out that you can not only have uh, your name on one line, but we were asked if seats could be purchased and you could say um, uh, the children of, you know, Ishmael and Carly Muhammad. You can have two lines, um, no more than 18 characters per line. Now, these are just names, no messages, you know, nothing like, you know, we love you, Brother Farrakhan, and we'll continue to help you in this great cause. It's just your name. And of course, those seats, even down the road, if they have to be reupholstered, the plaques will remain on the seats of Mas Maniam for generations to come. So the information is in the Final Call newspaper. And again, the technical team has told me that by the end of the week, you will be able to go online. We have uh, outsourced the job. They ensure us that we will have uh, all of the plaques made uh, ready, because we know if you make that contribution, the moment you come into Chicago, or those of us in Chicago, once we go back in the sanctuary, we'll be looking for our name on that seat. So we're going to make sure that that is done in a professional manner. Uh, the Minister Farrakhan sends you his love and greetings of assalamu alaikum. Thank you. You may remain standing as we now will prepare for prayer. 
He is um, praying that all of us will strive to observe uh, the month of Ramadan. And we encourage all of the Muslims during this month not only to make the effort, and of course, um, there are exemptions for those who are sick or taking medications, but we also want to strengthen the ties of relationship, and we want to fellowship during this month, and that means let's open the doors to our home to break our fast, to eat food, to pray together, and let's, let's just be a strong family, a loving brotherhood, a loving sisterhood. May Allah bless the Muslims here in the United States and throughout the world with a blessed month of Ramadan. Thank you, and we'll close with prayer. At the conclusion of the prayer, we will have local announcements here in Chicago, and there are local announcements to be made in the other cities. So let's give those announcements our undivided attention after the close of prayer. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and to thee alone do we beseech for help. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom your wrath has been brought down, nor of those who go astray after they have heard thy teachings. Say he, Allah is one. Allah is he on whom we all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Amin. Amin. Um, I'd like to just say, if we're still online, all of our families and those viewing uh, this program that are in the southern states, as you know, many of the Gulf Coastal cities uh, are evacuating and taking measures because they expect a Category 4 hurricane to hit somewhere along uh, Louisiana or Mississippi. So please um, take precautions and uh, to protect yourselves and to put your families in safety. And we pray that all will be uh, safe should this uh, calamity hit hard and it is expected to hit hard. Um, so I wanna, we want to uh, not, uh, let everyone know one of our brothers suffered an accident uh, last uh, week. 